I'm Donna Gress, and the topic today is colon and rectum AJCC 8th edition staging. First, we're going to talk about T, N, and M categories. It's very important to understand the microscopic anatomy of the colon and the rectum. You really have to understand the different tissue layers in order to assign the staging. You also need to know the order of the layers. Regardless of the name, the same layer is the same T category. So whether it's called subserosa or pericolic tissue or serosa or adventitia, the main T category does not change. And whether it's peritonealized or non-peritonealized, the main T category does not change. One way to think about this is if you have a house with a backyard and maybe there's even a fence between the very end of the backyard and uh, the neighbor's yard. So the house is like the colon with the walls of the house being the muscularis propria. Now the backyard is that pericolic tissue or that subserosa. So if you come out of the house and you're in the middle of the backyard, it makes no difference whether there's a fence at the back of the yard or not, you're still in the middle of the backyard. So hopefully that helps you to understand that whether or not there's that fence, that um, serosa out there doesn't affect the staging. Now let's talk about the clinical T category. Clinical TX is correctly assigned for colonoscopies because that does not provide tissue layer involvement. But don't assume you're going to have CTX for all cases. Many times imaging can provide that tissue layer information. So it's important to look at each case carefully. You should also look at NCCN guidelines and the American College of Radiologists appropriateness criteria. They will give you a lot of information about what types of imaging will be ordered or is appropriate. For colon cancer, you're most likely going to see abdominal and pelvic MRI or abdominal and pelvic CT. For rectal cancer, you'll probably see a pelvic MRI. You might also see endorectal or transrectal ultrasound and abdominal pelvic CT or MRI. Clinical T and pathological T categories. When we're looking at involvement of other organs or structures, it's important to understand the difference. You might see potential direct involvement for clinical staging. For example, clinical T4B imaging might show adherence to other structures, and you may think that those are involved, and that's the physician's judgment call. But when it comes to pathological staging, you need evidence of that direct involvement. So PT4B means that tumor was found in those adhesions on microscopic exam. PT1 up to PT4A would be assigned if there was no tumor microscopically found in those adhesions. You assign the PT category based on the microscopic anatomical depth of invasion. So just because you think there's involvement on the clinical staging, that doesn't mean you will automatically have involvement on the pathological staging. The pathological T category, T4A penetrates to the surface of the visceral peritoneum. So therefore, T4A is only appropriate in those areas with peritoneum. That includes the ascending and the descending colon. You could have T4A on the peritoneal side, but if tumor is on the retroperitoneal side, that could be T3 with a positive radial margin. Now for the rectum, sometimes the upper rectum has peritoneum, 
but never the rectum below the peritoneal reflection. Those could be T3 with a positive margin. So unequivocal extension into other organs would be T4B. Now, operative findings are part of pathological stage. Many times people think it's only the pathologist that gives information for pathological stage, but operative findings are crucial, especially in the colon and the rectum. So let's say the surgeon sees PT4B involvement, but does not biopsy those areas. The pathologist reports PT3, since that is only based on the specimen they received. The correct T category assignment is PT4B per the surgeon. So remember, you have to use all of this information. You cannot stage from a path report alone. Clinical N and M categories. For clinical N, you must have an estimate of the nodal involvement in order to assign the category. Physicians may use their judgment to assign this category. Now, it does include tumor deposits. They belong in the N category. If there's nodal involvement, deposits are not added to the node count. And without nodal involvement, then clinical N1C is assigned. For the clinical M category, it's important to use subcategories, the A, B, and C. Now, this may be used with either CM or PM. And remember, both are valid because the M category is based on the method of assessment, not whether it's clinical or pathological stage classification. And only one of multiple sites must have microscopic proof in order to assign PM1B or PM1C. You do not need microscopic proof of all sites. Now, pathological N and M categories. Mesenteric nodes is a question we get a lot. This is a term used by pathologists, but not by surgeons. Mesenteric is not in the list of regional nodes since surgeons were the main authors of the chapter. Surgeons see the precise anatomic location during surgery. Pathologists use mesenteric, which is a more general term, because they don't usually localize nodes as right colic, middle colic, et cetera. They can't tell the nodal location for sure in the excised specimen. The landmarks are not there for that precise localization that the surgeons had. So any mesenteric node in a resection specimen would be considered a regional node. Now the M category assessment, as we talked about in clinical staging, it may be either CM or PM because it's based on the method of assessment, not the classification we're talking about. Multiple metastatic sites, you only need microscopic proof of one site to assign PM1B or PM1C. You do not need microscopic proof of all of the metastatic sites. Let's talk a little bit about polyps, the types and the T category. A polyp is an abnormal growth projecting from the mucous membrane. Sessile is mostly a flat growth with no stalk and pedunculated is attached by a narrow elongated stalk. Now for the polyp T category, on the pathology report, if it says there's invasive adenocarcinoma, but there is no information about whether it's intraepithelial, lamina propria, or submucosa. As long as the path report says it's invasive, that is at least involvement of the submucosa. So you can assign T1. The anatomy is often distorted in these polyps, so it can be hard for the pathologist to assess it. But if it's confined to the mucosa, it would not be called invasive. Now, polyps, diagnosis versus treatment. If you have a sessile polyp, the colonoscopy biopsy is usually diagnostic. It's usually an incomplete resection and a clinical TX. The surgical resection would be the treatment, the PT. For a pedunculated polyp, 
usually the colonoscopy does a snare polypectomy, and that is treatment, PT. And if there's no diagnosis prior to the snare, which there usually isn't, therefore you would have no clinical stage assigned because there was no diagnosis or workup prior to that snare polypectomy treating the polyp. So a general guideline for polyp removal during colonoscopy. If it's incomplete resection, it's probably clinical TNM. If it's a complete resection of the polyp and considered treatment, it's most likely pathological TNM. This is not dependent on margins, but on the purpose or intent of the resection. <clears throat> Now let's talk a little bit about stage classification, diagnostic workup, and treatment. For clinical and pathological staging, for clinical staging, the colonoscopy is usually not sufficient to assign a clinical stage. It may be assigned if you have imaging information and incidental findings at surgical resection are not clinically staged. For pathological staging, Use the clinical stage information together with operative findings and the pathology report of the resected specimen. You need all three pieces to do pathological staging. Post-therapy staging. Neoadjuvant therapy is often used for rectal cases. The YC staging for rectum. The initial treatment must be neoadjuvant, and then you would have assessment by exam imaging, and biopsies. And there is no stage group at this time since we don't have enough data. For YP staging of the rectum, the initial treatment must be neoadjuvant. And then you use all information from the YC staging with the operative findings and the pathology report of the resected specimen. The criteria for the clinical classification, which is also called pretreatment staging, the patient is undergoing a diagnostic workup. There's usually a medical history and physical examination, sometimes a colonoscopy or a sigmoidoscopy or a diagnostic biopsy. And the imaging is based on the guidelines that you can find on NCCN and the ACR website. An incidental finding during a surgical resection. The resection was most likely for an emergency bowel obstruction there is no clinical stage assigned if this surgical resection is treatment for the cancer. Never go back and assign stage in retrospect. You cannot go back in time. Now, diagnosis versus treatment. This is always some confusion. Diagnostic procedures are biopsies or a sampling of a polyp with no intent for surgical treatment resection. Surgical treatment of a primary site includes resection of the colorectal tumor, and the extent of the resection depends on the size and the location. It could be a local excision, a segmental resection, a partial colectomy, a hemicolectomy, or even a total colectomy. And while nodal dissection is important and it's commonly performed, you don't need a nodal dissection in order to assign pathological staging and consider this treatment. Now the treatment satisfying the stage classification. For pathological staging, you must have a resection of the colorectal tumor and the intent is treatment, not sampling. And a nodal dissection is standard, but not required to qualify for staging. Post-neoadjuvant therapy staging, very common for rectal cancer, and it usually consists of chemo, and or radiation therapy. Information and questions on AJCC staging. The timing is everything graphic can be downloaded for free from the AJCC website. It gives you a graphical um, idea of the different stage classifications with the arrows being the time frame and the square boxes being the criteria. The AJCC website can be found at cancerstaging.org, and the information includes an overview, version 9, also the cancer staging systems, including the 8th edition, and there's um, 
the ability to download a free chapter one principles of cancer staging. There's also a section for cancer staging education and frequently asked questions. It's important to review cancer form for help in your abstracting. Uh, be sure and look for questions first before posting a new one. Many times your question may have already been asked and answered. Um, so that's why questions really provide information for everyone. And it also allows us um, to do some tracking for educational purposes and decide where we need to focus our time and our education. This has been developed through generous support from the American Cancer Society, and we thank them. And I'm Donna Gress, and I want to thank you for your attendance today.